welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. If you are new here, my name is Sammy and on this channel we do DIYs wood science and there's always tons of laughter to be had. So if you think that's something you'd be into, then keep watching this video because for my wood round letters, this is for you. Starting with our 18 inch wood rounds, gloves, and our microfiber cloth. I am also using Golden Pecan by Rustoleum. And uh, yeah, so we are gonna be staining our piece of wood and I am going with the grain of the wood here. I did pre-sand this with 80 grit sandpaper and then 220 to smooth it on out. Make sure you get the sizes of your sides of your wood rounds because they come super rough and it'll make uh, putting stain on it really hard. So make sure you also sand the sides of this. Now I prefer microfiber cloth because it holds a lot of the stain um, and moves it around a lot more. And I've tried everything y'all. So this is my, my preferred method. So here it is after drying for 24 hours. And right here I'm showing you, you see the lines in there? That's because these are glued panels of wood. So use those lines to your advantage. Now I'm taking a uh, Scotch 233 plus automotive tape. Now this is more expensive. You could get it at your local automotive shops or on Amazon, it's in my um, Amazon store link. It is just so much more adhesive and I never, ever get bleeds with this stuff. So it's definitely, it's my thing, I don't know. So um, go ahead and make sure you tape off the sides. There are lines on the sides too, so make sure to follow them. Then we're gonna take Rich Black by Folk Art and our sponge roller. Y'all, the sponge roller is the way to go. If you use a brush on this, you are gonna be leaving brush strokes, which create ridges in your paint. So if you were to put your stencil on top of that paint, then your paint is then going to seep underneath your stencil vinyl and into all those little baby ridges. So that is why I prefer using the sponge roller because it's nice and it's even coats. Um, so yeah, so make sure to get the sides of this. You do not need to press hard on your sponge. There is no, no reason you should have to press hard. Then I'm gonna take the blow dryer on cool setting and I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the process. We're gonna go ahead and dry this. Do not use heat on chalk paint because it does have a tendency to crack if you do that right away. And then our favorite part, taking off the tape and seeing that crisp, beautiful line. All right, so you guys, let's go on to the next step. Now I am attaching my uh, stencil. This is with Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl, also in my Amazon store link. Then I'm gonna go ahead and get my finger and just press around all of the letters, making sure everything's adhered and it's down, no bubbles, um, nice, and smooth. Then I am taking a uh, linen white by Rustoleum, taking the same sponge roller, and I am going to just put light, even coats of paint. You do not, and I'm gonna repeat, do not have to press down on your sponge roller. If you have enough product on your sponge roller, you should just be able to do like the lightest application, the lightest roll without putting any pressure on it. So then after this, I'm doing blow dryer again on cool setting to speed up my process because we do have to do two coats of this white paint. And again, you can see how I kind of like keep going over my spots and that's just so I could create a smooth, even layer of paint. And you guys ready? Woo, you guys, look at those lines. Look at those lines. Not one gosh darn bleed. Not one, y'all. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. So then taking our uh, our Cricut uh, weeding tool, we're going to go ahead and weed those right out. Now, y'all, I'm going to give you a good tip. I had so many of you ask, how do you clear this without it smearing all over the place? So I usually have never had that problem. I usually wait 24 hours and then I put my helmsman on and I never had problems with it smearing. But I suggested to y'all use Rust-Oleum Clear Matte Spray Paint, put a light even coat over it one time, let it dry, and then put your helmsman on there. So that's what I decided to do and it's a game changer. So now taking our helmsman water-based, saying that loud because everybody 
it's water-based. If you do not want that beautiful white turning yellow, then make sure to get water-based. So this is a kind of like a water, watery texture. So you just need really light amount on your brush. You're gonna coat that over one time for me. I have an overhang on my porch, so I'm only gonna put one coat of this on the front, the sides, and the back. And uh, when you do the sides, make sure you get the sides because if you have any of this product come over your sides it's going to dry in little cloudy bubbles which we do not want so just taking my chip brush i'm just kind of going through and blending that product into the side and then we are also going to be doing a coat of this on the back as well and all i did was dry this on cool setting with my blow dryer to also speed up the process here so taking a clean clean pad I put this face down we go go ahead and do our back now helmsman is what you want to use for outdoor signs because it um, withstands humidity all the different weather changes snow heat all of that so that's why I choose to use helmsman spar urethane so now taking our wood rounds I am going three panels down and three inches in on each side with my D hooks now these D hooks have not been available for a long time on Amazon. They are back in stock, so I added them to my Amazon store link. They are my absolute favorites. So now taking our screw gun and our screw that comes with these, we are gonna go ahead and screw these into place and I do put them on on an angle. So now taking this wire jute, this is actually from Dollar Tree y'all and I love it. I also use like burlap ribbon and we'll just hot glue it and stuff. So there's so many different ways you can go about hanging these. This is just my preferred method. And if you watch some more of my videos, I have reversible signs. There's tons of different ways to do them. So I applied hot glue to the edge of this just so it didn't continue fraying. And then we're just twisting that up and it's absolute perfection, love it. So you guys, I cheated. This is a pre-made bow from Walmart. I got it 70% off during Christmas, after Christmas, and it was just too perfect not to use. So I did get another one and I'm totally gonna deconstruct it because this bow is just like epic, I love it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, fluff that out. I tried different greenery. Y'all know I usually always put greenery on my wood rounds, but for me, the simplicity of the like black and the white, and I don't know, it just, it looks so clean and fresh that I just wanted to keep it with the bow. So taking this industrial um, Velcro, I wanna be able to change my bow out. I wanna be able to change it to like a turquoise or a pink during spring. So I am going with Velcro to attach my, um, my bow. So I have tried this on, if you watched my Merry Christmas, the reversible sign that I made for my girlfriend, we chose to do Velcro so she can change out her bows when she reverses her sign. And it worked absolutely great. So all I did was apply some hot glue to that. Well, I took like, you know, the, the wrapper off and I did the same thing right here. Took the wrapper off, put a little bit of hot glue on there and then stuck it on my board. Now, you guys, I can go ahead and change this bow by season whenever I want. And this stuff is industrial. I have my mantle up with this. So here she is in all of her glory, looking absolutely gorgeous. Let me know how you like it down in the comments. And if you like, even if you're not like a wood round person, if you do like seeing these in the DIY videos, because they are so beginner friendly to make y'all, you will love making them. Hey y'all. So we are starting our first DIY with a wood round. I have already burned this round. I will leave the link for that down in my description box so you can see how. And I will leave a link on step-by-step -step, like designated wood round videos for you down below as well. This piece was inspired by Chastity in our Unicorn Dust Designs group. She posted a step-by-step picture um, tutorial and it helped me so much. So right here, you guys, we are going to form essentially our stencil. This is an 18 inch wood round from Home Depot. I am taking the painter's tape. This is Scotch 233 plus automotive tape. And Chastity recommended getting your like scraper, your vinyl scraper, you could use anything like a credit card too, and really pressing the tape 
down. And I think that made a world of a difference in this situation. So as you can see, I got my little pie slice up there, which is gonna be our stars. And then I'm going to start building our stripes. So as you can see, I'm using um, a little scrap piece. This is gonna make sure that we get straight lines all across and perfect spacing across as well. Now, as you get up, it gets kind of harder to wrap around the side, but um, it does work. So just play around with it, but we are going to be staining these sides of this board born as well. So we're going to carry this all the way down our wood round here. Easy peasy. You could also use other um, painter's tape. This is just what works for me. Everything I use will be down in my Amazon store link. Now I'm taking Barn Red by Verathane. I am using my microfiber cloth and I am going to now start putting that on this wood round. Oh, I do should say I burned my wood round and then I applied golden oak stain to it first. So now we're gonna carry this all the way down. I am not pressing hard on this. I am lightly coating my wood rounds with the barn red. Taking off now, oh, those clean lines. Oh my gosh, makes your girl happy. Oh, this came out so good and I really think the whole pressing down with your scraper did wonders. Okay, so now we need to do our stars. I let this dry completely up in the sun. I'm gonna take some painter's tape again, and we are gonna go right on top of that red stain. Our straight lines are already there for us. Right there, I was just making sure that my red stain was dry. If you feel any oily residue, if the um, stain transfers on your finger, it is not dry yet. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on. Then I took some vinyl um, cutout stars. I'm gonna put those on there as well. I'm just sporadically putting them on. I have no rhyme or reason to where I am putting these. Um, and then I'm gonna do the same thing, get my scraper tool and really make sure that they're down. So right here, I took Worn Navy by Verathane and I think it's because I laid that um, the, was it golden pecan I just said? I don't know. Uh, stain on there first. It started looking green. So I had it improvised here. I grabbed Ocean Blue by Waverly. I'm going to spritz it with some water to kind of make, we're going to make our own custom stain. I'm going to take that same microfiber cloth and I'm going to rub that. And that actually ended up being like the perfect, perfect blue. So I was really happy. Uh, happy mistakes, right? So we're gonna let that dry, which this dried super quick because it was paint. And we're gonna take those off. Now, I don't, the stars didn't do as good of a job as the painter's tape. I only got like a little, little bit of bleeds though. So I was really happy. This sign has intimidated me forever. So I was really excited to see Chastity in our Unicorn Dust Designs group post about it. All right, now I'm going to take my vinyl stencil this is aura mask 813 stencil vinyl y'all i have all of the supplies that i use on my wood signs in my amazon store link can you tell it's late at night and i'm in my pajamas so i am going to apply that this was an image from cricut you can also get tons of different stencils from amazon your local craft store um, tons of options now, if you guys have ever watched any of my wood round videos, I usually always use my little mini roller, but for this wood round, I really wanted it to be rustic looking. So I am using the lightest, you guys, and I mean lightest coat of this white chalk paint because I do not want to saturate the board. I do not want paint going underneath. And you can see right here, those crisp lines, yes. Yes, ma'am. Oh my goodness. I had a little bit of bleed on the O, but I wasn't worried about it because we're going to take a sanding block. We're going to rough it up just a little bit more. Oh, which I did not show you. Now taking my Helmsman. This is water-based, okay? Water-based in all caps. And I'm going to put one coat on the front, brush our sides, a coat on the back, now, if you are gonna put your wood round directly in the elements, which it's which I mean like not under a porch, not in a storm door, then you want to put at least two to three coats on your wood round to protect it from the elements. 
So I just go ahead and I let that dry in between coats. I'm not gonna show me doing all the coats, um, but I do rub it in on the side. That way we don't get cloudy globs um, from our clear spilling down the side. And now easy peasy, we're wrapping this up, y'all. I am going to take my D hooks. These are also in my Amazon store link. Um, I am measuring, I measure up 16 inches across. So you'll see how I move it up. That measures 16 inches across. Then I go three inches in and I do slant my D hooks and I'm just gonna screw those in. I'm then gonna grab my wired jute cord. This is actually from Dollar Tree and it is amazing. I use it all the time now. It's one of my favorite versus uh, like burlap ribbon and stuff. And you guys, that is it. Like I said, I will leave links for um, how to torch your wood round and how to um, do it step by step a little slower in my description box if this is something you're interested in learning about. Um, thank you, Chastity, so much for posting. You made it seem so easy and it gave me confidence to finally try this. Um, I was always worried that the stain was gonna bleed, but you all look at this wood round. The torching method, do you see how beautiful that red looks with it? Like, oh, it is stunning and y'all, all right, you guys, so you guys loved the top 10 video that I did last year. So these are the top 10 rounds from 2021. And I know a lot of you like the wood rounds just like in one video, because if you're somebody that's learning, it's nice to kind of hear and see things on repeat of how you're supposed to do it. So I hope that this helps a lot of you guys have it in one nice place. Um, down in the description box, I'm going to leave a live wood round link from Amazon that I filmed as well as my Amazon store. Now the Amazon live store, it is going to have, um, I'm basically going to explain in further detail what materials and supplies that I use for these wood rounds and you know, like why I use them, how I use them, all of that stuff. So definitely check that out. It'll give you a better understanding of why I'm using the materials I'm using. And with that said, let's go ahead and get back into the rest of these wood rounds. I hope you all have a good day and make sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this video. All right, you guys, let's get into it. Bye y'all. Alrighty, this is our next one. Do you guys remember this wood round? This is from a previous winter DIY video. And this is an 18 inch wood round. I get them from Home Depot. They are kind of scarce right now. Uh, you just gotta be patient and hunt them down. That's why I'm reusing this one. And I am going to take a linen by Rust-Oleum and this is chalk paint. And we are using a sponge roller to apply our paint. Now, the reason I use a sponge roller is because if you were to use a paintbrush, it would add texture to your paint. So then when you were go to lay your stencil, that texture would in return give you bleeds underneath your stencil. So this sponge gives you a nice smooth finish on your, your base color. So I just go in with one coat of the white. I like that you could still see the wood grain in there. Then I'm taking antique wax and a chippy brush and I am just going over this baby and distressing it. Y'all know I do not like stark white and for this romantic vintage feel I was going for, it really needed something more than just white. So after that is all dry, we are gonna go in with some painter's tape and it could be any painter's tape. This one I think is from Menards. And we are gonna go ahead and create our lines. So I'm going to go ahead and take one piece and this is gonna be like our, our base here. Then I'm going to go ahead and start stacking these on using this smaller piece as my guide as to how wide I want it and to keep the lines straight on my wood round. So I'm gonna continue this all the way down, as you can see, and you guys, this gives you perfect lines. It looks awesome, let me tell you. Okay, so once we're done with that, I'm gonna go back in with Blush Rose 
from Rust-Oleum, blush pink, sorry, blush pink. And I'm gonna go back in again with a roller. And when you guys, that's my, I think it's called a paint dozer and I get it, got it at Menards. Okay, so when you are going in on top of a stencil or on top of like painter's tape like this, do not push the sponge down. When you push your sponge down, you're pushing that paint underneath your stencil, underneath your painter's tape, and you are going to get massive bleeds. So just make sure your sponge has enough paint on it to where you can just nicely roll it over and you should not have to be able to press down on that sponge. So after I'm done with the first coat, I do go back in and do a second one because I missed a couple of spots. If I didn't miss spots, I probably would have been good with just one coat. So now after this, I'm gonna go in with my heat gun. I do recommend using a blow dryer on cool setting. So do as I say, not as I do. I just cannot find my blow dryer. And now look at these crisp, clean lines. Ugh, it's so beautiful. I love wood browns. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and dry that off. I let that set overnight. And then I am taking my stencil that I created on my Cameo, and this is Aura Mask uh, 813 Stencil Vinyl. It is great for placing over a painted sign. So we're gonna go ahead and put that, and then you guys, I'm gonna peel this back. This is Vinyl Ease Transfer Tape, and all of this stuff is in my Amazon store link down in the description box. And then I get super professional and fancy with it. <laughs> and tape it off with uh, basically my trash, but hey, I'm not wasting materials, but looking at this now, I'm like, girl, you are a mess. You are a mess. Good thing you're not like giving professional classes because yeah, this, you probably should not do it. This is probably like how you should not do it, but you know what? It works, it works. Okay, so now I sprayed that with Rust-Oleum Metallic Gold. And let me tell you, that color looks so high-end. It doesn't look like a cheap gold and it dries so fast. So here we are. We're, oh, sorry, I'm playing with the lighting. It is so, it's so terrible. I'm sorry, you guys. I should get lights by like mid-January, I think. Okay, ooh. She's beautiful. Okay, now we're going in with polyacrylic. Polyacrylic is great for indoor use in high traffic areas. So if you are using this as a tray, it's fabulous. I do put two coats on, I only show one, and just make sure it has like a watery consistency. consistency. So you only need a little on your brush and just make sure you are covering the whole thing because when it dries, if you've missed a spot, you'll definitely see it. Now, when you apply it, you will get some on the side. Make sure you go around the side and brush it kind of like off to the side. That way you don't get cloudy globs that dry there. And then y'all, that is it. You are done. And hello. Oh my gosh. Like I am obsessed with this. And the way that I decorated this dresser is it's stunning. Let me know if you're gonna try and recreate this because. We are gonna do two wood rounds today. Um, I'm doing two because I want one for my home and then I need to replace the ones that have sold out of my booth. So I'm just going to show you like the staining step for one of them and then I'll show you how I lay the graphics and the whatever I put up here. Now this gets asked all the time. I get my wood rounds from Home Depot. They are the cheapest and that's only when they're in stock. If they're not in stock, I simply don't buy them. Um, I personally do not like the thin wood rounds. Um, so I wait until they come back in stock. And when they do, I will buy like five or six, depending on what ideas I have going on. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and start off by staining these. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my microfiber cloth into some little squares. You could get these at Walmart. You could get them on bulk at Amazon doesn't matter. Um, I am going to use dark walnut for one and Jacobian for the other. I will give you a side by side so you can see the difference. Uh, when staining, I always go with the grain of the wood 
for the most part. Now, the trick is don't oversaturate your wood. That is going to take it forever to dry. Just dip your microfiber cloth in there, spread it around. It like is getting, you know, pushed into that wood. It, the wood's absorbing it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the front. You're gonna do the back. And then you are also going to do the sides. Now, I like to keep my wood, um, or sorry, I, will, I like to dry mine overnight. So I try to at least give it 24 hours to dry before I move on to painting my, my design on here. So make sure to, I did pre-sand this. I sanded it with 80 grit sandpaper and then 220. It should be like buttery soft y'all like you should be able to run your hand over it and it should be soft so now i'm taking my decal that i made with my cricut and right here my i want the i hope you brought underneath the tape line this is the part that i want painted so i'm just kind of trying to eyeball where i need to put my tape at this point and now we're going to move on to paints. And right here I am using Pumpkin by Waverly. I am using my mini roller. You guys see me use this all the time in my wood round videos. It's my favorite. And we are gonna do two coats of this paint. Now make sure you let it dry in between coats. Then our favorite part right here, y'all, is taking that painter's tape off and seeing that amazing crisp, line oh my goodness look at how gorgeous that is okay so now we're going to move on to the second one this is going to be the one that i will be keeping for myself so i'm using my 233 plus scotch painters tape again all of the supplies will be listed down in my description box i am making sure it's adhered to the wood very well then i'm going to take this is apothecary from DIY Paints. I get it from upcycledbybrie.com. I will leave her link down below. So at first I thought it only needed one coat because as I'm applying it and then as I dry it, it shows a little bit of the wood grain. And you all know I love my wood grain. So I was like, you know what, it's fine. Well, I wish I would have put two coats on it. So just put it out there. If you do have DIY paint, just go for the two coats, not one. It is full coverage. But like, see how beautiful it was looking? I was like, yes, this is looking good. But once it like settled in, it kind of looked more blotchy than anything. So I wish I would have put two coats on it. And you see how this dries down? This color is so stunning. It's so matte. I, I love it. Okay, so after that's done drying, ah, the favorite part. Okay. So here, so on the left, we have Jacobian. On the right, we have Dark Walnut. Now for me, Jacobian has more of, I wanna say, I don't think it's an undertone, but black undertone. And then Dark Walnut has more of a red undertone. So I like using Jacobian more than Dark Walnut, to be honest. All right, so now I'm gonna get my Linen White by rust -Oleum. This is like my tried, tried and true, so. I'll probably never step away from it. I know it works, so that's what I go with. Now I'm going to take my stencil. I made this with Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl, and then I am using or Vinyl Ease for my transfer tape, sorry. And again, all of this on my Amazon store link down in the description box. So I'm gonna go ahead and play around with placement. Sorry, I ha I always feel the need to stand when I'm making these. So that's why my head's gonna be in here quite often. So I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna play around with placement first, then I'm gonna smooth that on down very, very well, get my scraper, whatever these things are called. And then I'm gonna peel back my vinyl ease, make sure all of that's adhered to my wood. Now, when I am applying this white, you guys, the, the most important thing is you should not be putting any pressure on this roller whatsoever. I am literally, it's almost like I'm hovering it above the wood. I am not applying any pressure at all. The more pressure you put, the more chances you are of pushing that paint under your vinyl. So I'm going to um, dry this in between coats with cold air, and then we're going to take our uh, stencil vinyl off. 
So as you're pulling this off, I have my chippy brush set to the side because any of those little uh, flakes that come off from the chalk paint, if you happen to smear that, y'all, it's like smearing paint. It ain't gonna come off. So I'm gonna go ahead and weed everything out and then we are going to move on to the other wood round. And for this one, I put a Hey There Pumpkin. I will try to remember to leave all of the fonts. These are Cricut fonts down in the description box. And again, I'm using just the Vinyl Ease, same transfer tape, all of that good stuff. So we're gonna remove it, and then we are going to paint it. Now, people always ask me why I use chalk paint. Seriously, I have tried every single paint. This is just what works for me, what I find less bleeds with. And if it ain't broken, don't fix it. So I just, I just do my thing with chalk paint all the time. This is my first time using DIY paint on this though, and I really like it. So again, I'm gonna take that roller. I just got this roller. It's like a mini roller from Menards. And I'm gonna apply my white paint. I do do two coats with my white paint because obviously there's two different colors going on, a dark wood and then this light green. So in order to make the match, I need two layers of this white paint so that it looks like it's the same color. So again, we're going to dry that in between coats. I'll do my second layer. So, and then I have a multi-temp heat gun that goes cold. My girlfriend bought it for me and it's absolutely amazing. You don't wanna apply heat to your chalk paint because it will crackle the uh, chalk paint. All right, so after we're all done with this, I am now going to clear it. So I tried this. This is actually for like furniture so you don't leave streaks when you're clearing it. But I don't know if it's because this is Helmsman and Helmsman is thicker than polyacrylic. But I, no, no. It, it looks good right here looking at it, but it was like tack, like it was grabbing onto it and it felt gummy. So I just went back to my tried and true, just chippy brush. I'm applying the Helmsman. This is water based Helmsman. Water based, okay? If you use oil based, it is going to turn all of that white yellow. So water-based Helmsman, the sign's going outside. You wanna protect it from the elements. Polyacrylic is not going to do that. Polyacrylic is for indoor use. Read the cans, you will see. So I do um, a coat in the front, coat on the sides, coat on the back. You are going to do two coats, three, depending on what kind of weather you live in or if this is going to be like in, like directly out in the elements. For me, we do have an overhang and we do have a storm door. I would probably, if you didn't have either of those, put at least three coats of Helmsman on to protect the sign. For me, I am all about, if I'm gonna like ask $55 for a wood sign, then I want these wood signs to last my customers years from now. That's a lot of money and I want it to last. So after these dry, after we do the two coats, we're then gonna do D hooks again, sorry about my big head, but these are D hooks again in my Amazon store. Now I've come to the point where I could kind of just eyeball it, but it's usually about like three inches down and like two inches in on each side. But again, you guys can eyeball that. It doesn't have to be an exact. Now I'm taking the wired jute cord. This is from Dollar Tree, you guys, and it's my new favorite. I used to use burlap ribbon. Nah, this is my favorite now. So after I'm done with that, we are gonna go ahead and uh, accessorize. So I'm taking, I don't know why, I was totally filling the black and white ribbon. I did it for both of them. These are going to be 19 inch strips. At first I start with three. I don't think I use all three of them. Maybe I do, I think I do, I don't know. All right, no, I only use two. Okay, so 19 inch strips. I hot glue all of the ends together. You will also cut a about five to six inch strip and that's gonna be what's gonna essentially be our middle. You could see right here, now I'm taking this burlap. That's gonna kind of be like our the tail of our bow and you'll see what I'm talking about. So at first I play around with it. I thought I wanted three of them and then I was like, nah, nope, not feeling that. So I take the, I end up taking the middle one out. You'll see right here. 
See how like the back, I loved that burlap back there. It looks so cute. Okay, so now we're just gonna do two strips here. We're going to take that burlap in the back, this one, and then we just take a zip tie. I'm gonna take my little, well, now I'm gonna make it, my six inch strip, and you essentially make like a cylinder out of it. This is what's gonna be the middle part of our bow. And I have found, especially lately, that the less I put, like the less I accessorize it, the better they sell. And I don't know if that's because it, it becomes more uh, personalized when you're using greenery and stuff like that, but the wood sign, the wood rounds that I've been selling lately are like minimal. So then I take my heavy duty Velcro, I'm gonna place that on the back. Now, a lot of people have asked, like, doesn't that fall off, this and that? No, I have had the uh, stay a while wood rounds on my door since I made it and have had no issues in the Kansas heat. I also like to have the option that if I'm gonna put this sign and I'm going to spend the money and I want it till next year, what if I'm like not feeling this vibe next year for this bow? I wanna be able to change that out. So that is why I've started using the bow instead of, or sorry, the Velcro instead of E6000. So to be honest, you guys, um, I record from my phone and my phone's uh, storage ran out. So you're not going to see the entire thing of this one, but I just wanted to give you the idea and share a little bit of information. So at first I go with this one, don't like it. Then I get the lamb's ear and these velvet pumpkins from Dollar Tree, which look gorgeous. I cut the stems down just a little bit, and then I take some floral wire and actually like connect them together just so I could keep the placement exactly as I want it to, as I want it. And then I form my bow, put my zip tie on and stick these through the back. I will leave other wood round videos so you can see what I'm talking about, but it just makes it so easy. So this is how the wood rounds turned out, you guys. I hope you enjoyed them. I hope they inspired you. Um, gave you maybe some ideas on what you can make for fall for yourself or if you sell wood rounds as well. Or if you are new into wood rounds, uh, welcome. They become very addicted. This one I'm gonna keep for myself. It totally matches our vibe. Not really the bow, but I don't know. I couldn't help myself with these black and white bows today. So I hope you enjoyed the wood rounds and I hope you enjoy the rest of this video. Let's keep going. You guys, it's wood round time. So this is an 18 inch wood round from Home Depot. I'm using sun bleached by Verithane, my microfiber cloth and gloves. We're gonna stain the front, you're gonna stain the back and you are gonna stain the sides. I did sand this prior to staining. Next, I am going to tape off where I want my stencil to be. So these are glued panels of wood. So usually there is a distinct line for you guys to use, making it very easy. However, I could not find the lines on mine and that rarely happens. So I took my stencil, this is permanent vinyl, and I am going to go ahead and put that on, use my rich black folk art chalk paint and mini roller. All of the supplies I use are in my Amazon store link if you head over to my channel. We are gonna go ahead and weed that off. Easy peasy, right? All right, so after you're done weeding that, we're gonna try something a little different. So I have been seeing people make these wood rounds with prints and it's sublimation. I don't have stuff to do that. So I figured, you know what, let's try it with tissue paper. We do it for other things, why not a wood round? So I'm taping off where I want my tissue paper to stop or start, however you look at it. I'm gonna use the Spar Urethane. This is the clear that we're gonna coat our wood rounds with. So all we're doing is substituting this for Mod Podge, which you could still even use Mod Podge. So I'm gonna coat this a light coat. I'm gonna get our tissue paper and I'm gonna lay it on top. Now you guys, I know there's different ways of putting the tissue paper on, but it worked for me, so this is what I'm going with. So you're gonna lay that on. I'm gonna start tapping this. Do not rub or you're gonna rip your tissue paper. It is so thin, so just keep patting it down and then you're gonna bring it all the way up to the edge. And I will show you, once I flip this around, 
I do the same thing. I coat the bottom, but this time I like folded the tissue paper in half and it made it so much easier to control. And again, we're just gonna pat this all the way down. And then you're gonna, I let mine sit and dry overnight just to be safe. I really wanted that tissue paper to harden up. Next, I grab my rough sanding block from Dollar Tree. This is my favorite sanding block ever. I'm going in downward motions right on the edge. We're taking off all that excess tissue. We're gonna do that all the way around our wood round and it comes out flawless, you guys. So once we're done with that, we're gonna grab that spar urethane um, water base. I'm gonna do two coats on the front, the back and the sides. This clear is um, meant to protect your wood signs from the elements of being outside. So after we done, we're done with that and we let it dry, we flip it over and I'm going four inches in on each side and attaching my D hooks. Again, all of this stuff is in my Amazon store link if you head over to my channel. So we're gonna screw those in. I'm gonna grab some wired jute. This is just from Dollar Tree and it's seriously my favorite way of hanging my wood rounds. It works great. After you're done with that, we are gonna go ahead and make our bow. So grabbing some burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree, I cut two 17 inch strips. You'll actually need to cut three though. And we're gonna glue the ends together. I also cut a six inch strip. We're gonna make like a little cylinder out of that. All right, and now I'm gonna make two tassels. Um, I have a lot of beaded like garland videos. I'll attach those in my hot video if you wanna check out how to make these. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and string some more twine, eight wood beads, cause I wanted four beads hanging on each side. Attach that second tassel, and now we're going to put our bow together. So I'm just squeezing all of our elements together, grabbing a zip tie. This is like my like secret, I love it. It works so well. Once you have that bow where you want it, you're gonna tighten that up, cut the excess off. Now, this is heavy duty Velcro and it is my favorite way of attaching bows because then you're not committed to keeping that bow. So now I can change it to be blue, red, I mean, whatever I want. So um, I actually, on my front door right now, I've had a wood round up for about two months and with the Velcro and I mean, haven't had any issues. So we're gonna go ahead and attach this to our wood round and we are done, you guys. I hope you loved this wood round and I hope it inspired you. All right, y'all, I hope you love this wood round. I hope it gave you some great ideas on the possibilities that can be had with them. It doesn't just have to be stain and paint. There are so many things that you can do with these beautiful wood rounds. I hope you loved this and I can't wait to see your creations. DIY. Okay, so we are starting off with this 18 inch birch wood round. I bought it off a local gal. It is half an inch thick. I've never worked with this type of wood rounds before. I usually buy all of mine at Home Depot, but I thought, you know what, let's give this a try. If I could support somebody local, I would love to. So I'm taking my microfiber cloth. I shake out all the lint balls. I'm using my Min Wax. I think it's pronounced uh, is, isp, isp, which something like that. All right, so you guys, right off the bat, I was not impressed. And that is only because there's no wood grain in these. And the reason I do wood signs and love wood signs so much is the wood grain. I try to show as much of that grain as possible, whether that be not painting the words and instead letting the words show the wood grain, whatever it may be. I was so sad. So <laughs> I know that might sound funny, but like, the, the wood grain adds so much character to these signs, but I was like, you know what? We're covering it with paint anyways, get over it. So I continue to stain. We did the front and I do the back. Now this wood was drinking up this stain. Like it was a tall glass of water. Like it absorbed right into it. Now, usually I let my wood rounds dry 24 hours. This one, I will show you. I didn't think I needed to do that, but I did. All right, y'all. So we are in our Cricut design space. I'm gonna go ahead and quick, sorry, I have to hold my phone, so just bear with me. 
Uh, we're gonna go ahead and click our circle. Now I'm gonna bring it over. I'm going to unlock it so we can change the size. Then coming up to width, we are gonna change the diameter to 18 by 18. Now, what you see on this is exactly how you're going to see it like on your wood round. Like this is an 18 inch circle. So whatever you put on here, that's exactly what it is gonna look like when you cut it out. So I'm gonna go to images and I just searched porch. We're gonna use this image. I thought this would look so good on a round here. Okay, so let me go ahead and blow that up. All right, now, I want you all to keep in mind. Now again, how you see it on here is how you are going to see it on your wood round. We also have to think about the fact that you can only cut 12 inches wide, 24 inches long, or you would have to slice your image up, okay? We don't wanna do that. I want you guys, I wanna make this easy on you. So what we're gonna do, yeah, don't need, if you try to cut it like this, I say make it, this is what you're gonna get. The project is not supported by your current machine selection and that's because the image is too big. So we're gonna press okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna size our image down. Cause even if I took away the circle and I tried to cut this as is, oh shoot, did I actually do it like right size the first time? What's up? I think I did. Hey, okay. So, hey, hey, hey. Okay, so if you did it, if you didn't get it the first time, then you can, ow, hold on you guys. Holding this phone up, my like shoulders hurt. Okay, anyways, you guys, let's just do this. Okay, so here we go. Here's our image. If you say make it, do you see how it says, welcome to our porch? And this is what is going to cut out first, okay? Then you're gonna press continue. Okay, it's telling you you need a mat that's more than 12 inches long. Got it. I'm gonna do vinyl, cause I'm gonna cut this decal or stencil is gonna be made with permanent vinyl. And that's it. And then we're gonna go press continue. Now you're just gonna click that little flashing button and the Cricut is gonna take care of it for us. It knows how, like what depth to do. It knows that you're cutting regular vinyl. It's absolutely amazing, you guys, and it's effortless to use your Cricut machine. Now that that's done, you're gonna hit your second one, right, right here, okay? So it's already laid out for you, size is done. We're going to hit, it'll say continue. I can't see you. And we're gonna do that one with stencil vinyl. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and cut it. And here we go again, you guys. All I had to do was uh, press stencil vinyl and it does the work for me. You don't have to adjust the blade. You don't have to do anything with the depth of the blade. It knows the material and there's you guys, hundreds of materials on the Cricut Maker that you can cut. It is insane. So I'm gonna finish cutting this stencil out and then we're gonna bring it on over to the table. All right, so here we are now. We have our um, vinyl cut out and this is when, you guys, I thought this was dry. Like I rubbed my hand on it, no oily residue. Uh, there was no stain that was showing up on my fingers. So I felt pretty confident that I could go ahead and lay the vinyl and start painting. So I'm trying to find the position here. I get my scraper and I start scraping it down and the vinyl will not stick. And if most of you know, if your stain is still wet, it will not adhere. But I was convinced it was the wood. I was like, no, it's the wood. The wood is the problem. So then I grabbed territorial beige and I painted and I dried it. And I was like, vinyl always sticks to paint. So that, that was my next thing. Well, it still doesn't stick. So then I realized I have to wait and let this hold up overnight and let it completely dry and then come back for the vinyl. 
Okay, no more interruptions, I promise. So then I go back old school and I'm like, I'm using my black vinyl, that always works. I'm using my vinyl ease, which always works. This is now the next day, I let it completely dry. And um, now I'm applying it and I'm, I'm already having luck. I could already tell that it's kind of grabbing on here. So I'm gonna go ahead and find my placement. Remember, you need this bottom piece because that kind of like lays into the bottom porch word. So I am measuring this. I'm gonna go ahead and take my scraper again. We're going to start pushing that down. Uh, the vinyl ease that I do use is in my Amazon store link. And after that, now, as I start pulling it down, I'm like, oh man, but you make it work. Sometimes you just have to take a little bit more time. So the vinyl letters wanted to lift just a little bit. So I got my scraper and I helped them along by scraping upwards on the letters so that I'm kind of like varnishing them on here. Don't go downwards with your scraper or you're going to scrape those uh, vinyl letters or tear them right off. So go slowly, take your time. It's not always rainbows and unicorns when you're making wood rounds, especially when you're starting off. It is a lot of trial and error. I know. All right. So now taking Rust-Oleum chiffon, I am going to do just a messy brush over this. I kind of wanted like a, a shabby cottagey porch look. I don't know you guys. I just kind of go with it when I do my wood rounds. Um, but I always make sure that I fully cover all of those letters up. We are going to let this dry. Chalk paint dries so fast. I only do one coat. Once that dries, I am gonna get my Cricut weaning tool. Now you guys, oh, sorry. I do do the sides too, but I don't do the back. We did stain the back, so it still looks like a finished product in the end. So now I am going to weed. I have to tell you guys, this Cricut weeding tool, if you do not have one, get yourself one. It is the sharpest weeding tool I have ever used. And if any of you guys have another one that's dull on the end, you are gonna end up gouging your wood um, because you have to press hard to get underneath your vinyl. This one, you just poke a little piece of that vinyl and it gets right up under there and helps you along. So definitely check that out. I will try and leave a link for it down in the description box. I think it comes in a kit though, not by itself. So after we're done with that, we're gonna take this on outside. I'm gonna be using my Orbital Skill Sander with 220 grit sandpaper. This is gonna help get those um, strong like brush strokes off and then distress it in places that you want. So now that we're done with that, I did clean this off. I am taking my Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl and I am also using the Cricut transfer tape. You guys, make sure when you buy Cricut transfer tape, it comes in different grips, okay? So like strong grip would be glitter. This is just a regular standard one. So I am gonna use my painter's tape here. We're gonna paint off everything. I'm gonna do the other side cause your girl's a hot mess and I will probably get it on the sign. My Aura Mask stencil vinyl is in my Amazon cart for you guys down in the description box. So taking my stencil brush from Dollar Tree and this color is actually moss, I believe. I'm gonna go ahead and just stipple this on. Now y'all remember, a little goes a long way. You don't gotta get crazy. You could always go back in with more. You also do not want to press down hard. This is gonna cause you to have bleeds, which y'all know we do not want. That is probably the most disappointing thing when you pull your vinyl and you have bleeds. Like, ugh. That's when I say, don't stress, distress. My girl, my girl taught me that one. Um, so I am going to go ahead and finish this up. Now I wait until it's completely dry before peeling up my vinyl. And that is because, like I said, I am a hot mess and I will probably drop the vinyl or smear it or something if it's wet. So I just like to wait until it dries. Chalk paint doesn't take that long. So after I'm done with this, we are going to now clear it. So I take Helmsman Spar Urethane. Make sure your spar urethane is water-based. If it is oil-based, it is gonna turn your sign yellow. So spar urethane helps protect your signs from the elements um, being outside. If you do not have an overhang over your porch or you don't know if your customers will, make sure that you put two to three coats of this on your wood round. Make sure you hit the sides and you hit the back just 
as many coats as the front. So I'm not gonna put you through that pain. I'm gonna skip through do me doing all of these, all these clear coats. Um, but yes, this is also in my Amazon store link for you guys to check out. All right, now I'm taking my wire dupe cord. This is just from Dollar Tree. It's my new favorite cord to use on my wood rounds. I am just stapling this in here, twisting it up. I wanted this wood round just to be super natural. Like I did not want the greenery and the bows and all of that. I just wanted a super simplistic wood round, which I don't usually do, but I was really vibing on this one. So we're gonna go ahead and finish this. I measured them about two and a half inches in and how far you go down, that's really preference, you guys. Um, I get that asked a lot. So just finish this up and then you guys, we're done. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Hey you guys, I thought, you know what? It's beautiful out here. So let's do the reveal for this sign, where it's gonna be going. And look at how beautiful this turned out. Do you see how when you sand, you minimize the brush strokes and it looks more a part of the wood. You have those crisp lines from that stencil vinyl. And then remember, this is the birch wood, so it's a lot thinner as well. Your back is stained and it's cleared and it is ready to go right over there on the porch. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure I'm going to talk real quick. Like we got our wood round. This is from Home Depot, 18 inches. We are going to try the gel stain again, but this time your girl is going to pay attention to if it actually dries faster than the oil-based stains. Because if that is the case that would be a game changer because then I wouldn't have to wait 24 hours to continue the process of my wood rounds. So we're going to take our gel stain, microfiber cloth. You could get a huge pack of them on Amazon. I believe I have some on my Amazon store link and some rubber gloves. Let's get started. Okay, you guys, so we are going to start staining. We're gonna go with the wood, with the grain of the wood. We're gonna hit the front and then the back. Now, I did pay attention to dry time on this. For me, I ended up waiting the 20, like letting it dry overnight because I kept going back. I even tried like drying it with my heat gun and it kept having like a sticky tacky residue. So I didn't feel comfortable putting my paint over that. So I ended up waiting overnight to actually apply the white chalk paint. So, I don't know if that's just my experience or what, but to each their own. All right, now I'm grabbing Rust-Oleum Linen White, my old school chip brush, and you can see I'm mostly gonna saturate my paint towards the middle of the wood round, and then I'm going to kind of fan it out as we get to the outer edges. I want this to be a very distressed look, um, and a chip brush, you guys, is literally like the cheapest brush you can get. You could get it at Dollar Tree, any, any store, Amazon, and they just have like these really wiry bristles. It's great for distressing. And like for me, I, I'm not good with my paint brushes. So having something super inexpensive is right up my alley. Okay. And then I hit the sides. I leave the black, uh, the black, the back blank. Okay. So now that that dried, I got my Aura Mask 813 stencil vinyl. I created this one actually on my uh, Cameo. And I am taking, I think it's called Maisie by Waverly. And I, it, this took me a while to do. Oh, I look bald. Oh my gosh, that dang acalic. <laughs> Anywho, enough about me. Okay, so I'm just using my stencil brush from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna do two coats of this. After that dries down, I'm gonna then go with my red. Now, if any of you guys remember my Christmas DIY videos, I was using the red and I was so confused because when I was peeling up my aura mask, the red chalk paint was peeling up with it and I had never had that happen before. So I used it again and it's definitely this chalk paint. I guess I got a bad batch I don't know what was going on, but it was definitely you, not me kind of thing. Okay, you know? All right, so I do that. We take off the stencil vinyl, and then I did take it outside. 
I sprayed it with one coat of clear matte Rust-Oleum spray paint. That way we don't have the red smearing over the white. Then I'm taking polyacrylic, polyacrylic water-based. It holds up, it's very durable. This is what I use if I'm doing inside projects and it is um, food safe after it has cured. So I'm gonna put two coats on the top, two coats on the bottom, make sure that I do my sides as well. I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry and then we are gonna apply some handles. So I got these at Hobby Lobby, they were 50% off, so $2 each. And you guys, I don't know if this is the easiest way to do it. Most of the time, I'm just like winging it, like in motherhood, life, work, and putting handles on wood rounds. And uh, I just make it work for me. So I don't know if it's the right way, but it's the way that works. I get a yardstick, I put it where I think the middle is, and then I try and measure across. <laughs> so you guys, I hope I'm a great teacher for you. <laughs> so once I get it, I am going to get my drill and I'm gonna pre-drill holes. And the reason I did this is because I had flathead screws, I think that's what they're called. So I couldn't use my screw guns, I had to do it by hand. So it just makes uh, twisting that screw in there a lot easier when there's a pre-drilled hole. So y'all, I know this might look intimidating, but wood rounds are very easy. They're very inexpensive to make. And once you like make a few, it's like making a, a box cake. Like it, it's just so easy. So you know what, don't be intimidated. Go get one, Home Depot, Lowe's, Menards, and make one. This will definitely be a gift. Like if you were doing Bad Santa or something with your family that people are gonna be fighting over. Look at that wood grain up there. Woo! This came out so, so good, you guys. Let me know what you think about it. Okay, so for our first DIY, you guys, I am actually recycling this. I made this Lazy Susan when I first started YouTube. I will leave the link for it down in the description box for you. I actually spelled y'all wrong on it. So I sanded all of it down. I created this stencil from my Cameo. I'm using the uh, 651 matte vinyl. Now I get asked all the time, why do I use vinyl? Like, why do I paint instead of just using vinyl as a design? And it is because you guys, I cannot guarantee the longevity of vinyl. I can, however, guarantee the longevity of something that I painted on. And if I'm gonna ask people to pay the price that I charge for my rounds or my Lazy Susans, I want to guarantee them years of this product. So you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to place this on our 15 inch wood round. Oh, and I did stain this um, uh, American. Yeah, American. No, what is it called? Early American, sorry you guys. And if any of y'all, please let me know down in comments, what clear transfer tape do you use? This is Dollar Tree transfer tape and it's horrible. It is horrible. I tried it in the past. Um, sometimes it works good, sometimes it doesn't. Um, and in this case, it did not. So let me know what you use down in the comments. I would love to try something new. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and transfer this to our wood round. This is going to become our stencil, I guess you can say. And the stain was not all the way dry on top. So that is why you are seeing me have a difficult time getting my vinyl to stick to the wood round. All right, now we're taking Rust-Oleum Linen White. I am taking a chip brush and we are going to make this a just distressed paint job. I'm not trying to coat the entire wood round here and I am only gonna do one coat of the linen white. Now, after this, I am going to completely allow it to dry. Now I say that, but I did not wait very long for this to dry. So I go ahead and I weed all of our letters out and it came out so good. However, you guys, I usually wait 24 hours to allow the chalk paint to cure before I 
um, clear it or before I sand it. However, I was in a time crunch and I did not wait and you will see what happens. So I put 220 grit sandpaper. Do you see how it looks like it's just smearing the paint? Well, let me tell you, it is doing that. Um, usually it would not smear like it. The letters would still look super bright, but that's what you get when you try and rush things. All right. So right here, I am using the poly acrylic water based to clear this lazy Susan one water based will not yellow your paint Two, poly acrylic is food safe. If it proper properly cures, um, I put two coats of the poly acrylic on because I want this to be able to last. I want somebody to be able to set a cup on it. And if it sweats, it's not going to affect it anything. If you get food on it, you're going to be able to wipe it down easily. Um, so that is why I'm using poly acrylic versus the Helmsman Spar Urethane. After we put the two coats and we let it dry, we are done with our Lazy Susan. Now this would make a beautiful sign if you wanted it to, but you guys, I thought fall, football, kind of goes hand in hand. And I thought, how perfect would this be for football Sunday to set up on your bar in the kitchen or your coffee table with some appetizers and drinks on it. And then here you see it down below. And there we go, Lazy Susan. Let me know what you guys think about this down in the comments and I'll leave the original video down below. Hey there, hello there. <laughs> okay, and it's beautiful outside. Make sure you head over to the blog, you guys, because I showed you my little sprouts of spring that are here, and it's so gorgeous. I like how I like angle it so you can see like what the the door hanger. I don't know. It's okay. Let's how about how about like that? Oh no, different places, different places. We had to film. I'm pretty sure there's stuff in my teeth. Hopefully I'm far, far, far enough away. Far, far enough away. Okay. Okay. I saw Stifler's mom. That's what lips look. Except my nostrils wouldn't be flared. <laughs> okay. like sunny but it's still like breezy outside and kind of cold okay let's go in 